what do you expect for a talk about nanotechnology? You expect some complicated machinery or some complex diagrams. Well, not this time. I'm going to disappoint you. The topic of today is about beauty. Beauty is fascinating to all of us. It's one of the most fascinating topics. And so every evening as I sit home watching television, I am bombarded with publicity about um, products. And they're trying to convince me to put on some mascara or to try out the latest shampoo. And so far, I, I, I resist. But uh, the, the message they bring is very, very appealing. They provide strong eyelashes. They provide intense contrast. They can make them longer. And even for hair, they have very strong qualifications about what they can do with hair. Now, there is a lot of technology that goes into these hair care products. And as you can see here on the right side is the structure of a hair. You see it is very rough. It's a very complicated structure. And you can imagine it takes a lot of effort to put on the chemicals and the processes that you want in order to, to have these, these effects. I've also put on a small carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotubes is one of the technology, na nanotechnologies, hype things, who are actually already in products. They are used in plastic, in very light materials, in composites. And this nanotube is put on top of the hair. And you see how perfectly regular it is. You can even make a, a small knot in it. You can make it bend. You could not do that with the hair. You can even make knots, as you see on the far right. So there is a lot of possibilities combining carbon nanotubes, nanotechnology with hair care. That's a challenge, something you want to think of. Now the second area where nanotechnology or, or, or nanoproducts have made a lot of impact is in care against the sun. The sun emits a broad spectrum of light. Most of it is not what we really want and we want to protect our skin and our eyes against that. Part of the sunlight is very good, so we have to let it through so that at the end of the day, uh, we have a nice suntan color in the evening. Again, there is a lot of technology behind those products because on the one hand, you want this product to be easily be put on the body, but also it should not go easily away, particularly in water. You would want it to stay in water for as long as possible. So clearly, there are some challenges there. And over the years, people have developed a lot of nanoparticles and microparticles in order to select specific portions of the light, to let it through to the body, and to block all those which are aggressive. And you see there's a whole palette of these particles that already exist, different shapes, different colors, anything you want, basically. And so beauty and health are very closely related themes. So if we want to be healthy and uh, we, we strive all to, to do that, we want to exercise, we need to care about the foods we eat. And of course, we need to find the right balance between our stressful lives and we want to have some education. But from time to time, this balance breaks down and we get ill. And some cells develop that we don't want. Cancer cells develop. And cancer therapy with nanotechnology is one of the most fascinating areas. And I think it's one of the areas where there will be significant breakthroughs. And these processes uh, are shown really on the top right part, you see a particle, a cage, you can think of it as a cage, you put in some drug molecules in the cage. And on around the cage, you can put some molecules, some receptor molecules, and those molecules, when you put them in the body, they will go, find their way, and attach to cancer cells. And you see the red dots in the bottom picture, those are particles which are attached to cells. So these particles are going to find their way to the cancer cells, release their drugs, and kill the tumor cells. There is a lot of research going on in this area, and it's, I think it's one of the most promising things that are currently coming out of uh, the whole nano area. Okay, and the final example that I want to show and talk to you about is this morning experience. Every morning we get up out of the bed, we go into the bathroom, and we look in the mirror. And for many of us, this is a devastating experience every morning again. You know, we do not really like what we see, you know, and it happens every day again. I was reading a recent study where they claimed that um, in Britain, and I'm sorry for the pink ladies, correct me if this is wrong, that in Britain, women look in the mirror up to 71 times per day. 71 times per day. So 
probably th th this is maybe exceptional. And, and I don't think there is a lot of difference between Belgium and, and Britain for that matter. But now think about the following. You look in the mirror every day. Now suppose that the, I that the mirror shows you the picture that you actually want to see. You know, wouldn't that be great? In just of being, instead of being disappointed every morning but, but the picture that you actually <laughs> see, why could the mirror not adapt and show you, project the picture that you actually would want to see? And we have already some, of some technology elements to do some of these things. So we have these micro mirrors that you see at the top right part. We have mirrors where actually you can change the transparency of the mirror, it can reflect or you can actually look through the mirror. So we have some of these things already. And, and remember, beauty is actually, it is in the eye of the beholder, is what the saying is. So it really doesn't matter if you are beautiful or not, but what counts is the image you project in the eye, in your eye or in the eye of the people around you. Okay. So I think there are some interesting challenges around there. And if you look at nature, nature already does that to some extent. And I think one of the nicest examples is the chameleon. You know, it can project the colors that it wants. So I would like to conclude this quick share on this thought experiment. You know, what would it, how would it change our lives if we could really project the image to the other people, the image that we would want it to be? instead of trying to cover up and, mm, and make up and change things so that we actually change. Wouldn't that be great if we could just change the projection? Thank you.